Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Thor Love and Thunder proved that whoever you pray to, their attention is divided between you and Zeus's, uh, Thunderbolt. Over 50 gods appeared in this film, some familiar, some new, some in omnipotent cities, some with a work from home situation, I assume via Raven Mail, and while I covered a lot of them in my full movie breakdown, we now gotta go through these one by one. A, because I missed a few of them, and B, because each god represents a new world of believers in a new afterlife realm that now exists in the MCU. Spoilers for Love and Thunder, and uh, the best way to support new rock stars is to check out our new latest obsession shirt, Worthy of Love, because you are at NewRockStarsMerch.com. Now, we went into this movie already knowing Thor and the other Norse gods, Odin, Frigga, Loki, Heimdall, Sif, and Valkyrie. Their afterlife is Valhalla, which we finally see in this movie's post credit scene. This is where Asgardians go when they die in battle. But we also caught a glimpse of Hell, H-E-L. That's where Hela was was banished to, and where Loki thought he woke up in, in Loki episode four. Now, Omnipotent City is ruled over by Zeus, leader of the Council of Godheads in the Thor comics, and the head of the Greek gods. His half-mortal son is Hercules, the hero who made his MCU debut in the post credit scene. These gods reside in Mount Olympus. We also got a sighting of Dionysus, who shouts, good one, dad, at one of Zeus's jokes. Dionysus is a god of wine. There's also Artemis. She's a Greek goddess of the hunt. In this movie, Zeus lectures Thor. Every god watches over their own own peoples, nothing more, nothing less. That implies that each of these gods is assigned specifically to a civilization of people who believe in them. Zeus speaks in a Greek accent in this movie, a modern Greek accent, but few, if any, Greeks in modern day Greece actually pray to Zeus anymore. The country is predominantly Orthodox Christian. So this might explain why Zeus and Dionysus and the rest are such detached partiers and hedonists, because they have no living mortals who take them seriously anymore. Now, as Thor and the rest enter this golden temple of omnipotent city, they look up to see a golden dragon who looks like the great protector of Ta Lo in Shang-Chi. Ta Lo is depicted as a heavenly realm with wildlife rooted in Chinese mythology. We also went in this movie knowing a bit about Wakandan mythology, the panther deity Bast, and their afterlife being the ancestral plane. Bast appeared in the Black Panther prologue and is derived from the feline deity of Bastet in Egyptian mythology, who is often paired with the deity of Sekhmet. Both of these feline entities mentioned by T'Challa in Civil War. In my culture, death it's not the end. It's more of a stepping off point. You reach out with both hands and bust and segment. They lead you into the green veld where you can run forever. And I actually think we saw a cameo of Sekhmet behind Thor and Korg as they enter this temple, a white furred feline sleeping on the raised platform. This thing is roughly the same size Bost was depicted as in Black Panther. Its head looks panther-esque, like this might be a lighter furred partner to Bost. Now, months ago, we reported how one of the humanoid goddesses sitting in front of Valkyrie and Jane is Bost or Bostet, based on the credit that actress Akosia Sabet listed in her online resume, which might have been something she got from a casting director or from her feline and Inspired wardrobe, but she doesn't get any lines in this movie and doesn't appear in the movie's credits like many of these other gods do. So it's hard to know what to make of this. But speaking of Egyptian mythology, we did meet a number of Egyptian gods in Moon Knight, including Khonshu, Amit, Tuaret, and the members of the Ennead, seen through their human avatars, Osiris, Horus, Hathor, Isis, and Tefnut. But none of them appear here, though Thor earlier name dropped Ra, who is the Egyptian sun god. We didn't really see Ra in Moon Knight. Remember, in that show, Tuaret showed us the Egyptian underworld of the Duat, in the Aru, the Field of Reeds, and explained how these were part of an afterlife network linked with the Wakandan ancestral plane. So presumably, so is Valhalla, so is Hell, and so are all these other realms that these gods are linked to. Now, as they walk through the temple, Valkyrie points out a god of magic with wings and the spiked mask, and a god of dreams as the camera pans up to a giant eyeball. Now, that winged figure, this god of magic, might be the godly form of Isis, whom in Moon Knight we only ever saw in the form of her human avatar. Now, the god of dreams in Greek mythology is more Morpheus, but Morpheus isn't really ever depicted as an eyeball. Valkyrie also points to someone off screen, the god of carpentry, which might be her nickname for Jesus Christ, a carpenter by trade. Of course, Christianity has already been MCU canon from every shot of a church to this line. These guys come from legend. They're basically gods. There's only one god, ma'am. 
and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. And therefore, the Christian notions of heaven and hell likely also exist as realms in the MCU. But this video is brought to you by The Ridge. The Ridge wallet is light and sleek and industrial. It's designed to fit in your front pocket, unlike those bulky old school wallets and make you look like you're smuggling an 80s car phone in your back pocket. Check it out. There are over 30 colors, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. It holds up to 12 cards and still has room for cash. Card and gold dollars. This is what they call the Black Damascus. Only the finest for my front pockets. Every Ridge wallet comes with a lifetime guarantee and they'll let you test drive it for 45 days and send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. The wallets have over 40,000 five-star reviews. It's made with an RFID blocking technology that protects you from those digital pickpocketers. They also have other cool products like this commuter backpack. It's weatherproof and great for toting around a laptop. This month actually marks nine years since the Ridge started and they're celebrating with a special sale. So get 15% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash new rockstars. That's ridge.com slash new rockstars and use code new rockstars. Find the link in the video's description. Then they point out a couple jokey ones like Bao, the god of dumplings, and a Cronin god who sits on a throne of scissors. Sitting in front of Korg is an Aztec god with a feathered headdress. This is likely Quetzalcoatl, whom Thor mentioned earlier. He is the Aztec god of creation. There's also a goddess of the dead in white face paint, presumably also from Aztec mythology, maybe Mixtec Hasihuatl. And with these two, by extension, the Aztecian land of the dead, Mixlan, a version of which we saw in Pixar's Coco, MCU canon. And no, I'm not saying that every Disney animated depiction of some mythological afterlife is exactly what those afterlives are supposed to be in every form of fiction or in real life, but I'm just saying that the cultural elements that you love from those films are now established to have some MCU counterpart, which is really cool. There's also a Mayan god who carries a staff and laughs at Zeus's joke. This may be Itzamna, the Mayan god of creation, just because all these other representative gods seem to be the chief god of that pantheon. Now, Black Panther Wakanda Forever is expected to introduce Namor with some Jaguar iconography to Nakuerta, the actor, saying that he had to learn a language based on Mayan. There's also a Maori goddess, presumably Tuma Tuanga, whom Thor listed as part of his dream team earlier. Now, Thor also has to step over a Jade Morai god, who is a Japanese samurai figure. And then there is a goddess with golden discs on either side of her head. This is a very specific reference, the Elche goddess, based on the Lady of Elche, a limestone bust that was recovered in Spain that was believed to be a Carthaginian goddess, worshiped by Punic cultures who settled the Iberian Peninsula in ancient times. There's another goddess credited as Minerva, who is the Roman goddess of wisdom and art, the equivalent of the Greek goddess Athena. And then there's my favorite, the Fur God. Now there's also an assortment of other gods here, like two sycophant gods on either side of Dionysus, and then two masked gods. And of course, we cannot forget the four emotion gods whom Valkyrie disrobed, each color representing a different emotion. And I love how Thor gets the blue one, reflecting how in this movie, he is, in Korg's words, a sad god. Now, outside of this chamber are peeking in two celestials, the Mad Celestial and a Celestial Gardener. They're likely part of the lineup of celestials that includes Erishim, Jemiah, Hargan, and Nazar from the Eternals film. Now, Ego was also a celestial, but he just took a planetary and humanoid form. There were some murdered gods in this movie that include Rapu, who was a sun deity worshipped by Gore's people, Falagar the Behemoth, the gods of the Indigarians, and hundreds of other unspecified gods. There were some rumors of deleted scenes suggesting these might have included the Grand Master, Itri, and a goddess played by Lena Headey. Elsewhere in the MCU, we have just learned of the elder god Cthon, who wrote the Darkhold and may have been the source of Wanda's sorcery. And of course, the Eternals, Athena, Icarus, Ajax, Cersei, Kingo, Sprite, Makari, Gilgamesh, and Bastos, and Druig, they were all seen as gods that inspired Earth's mythologies, but were actually synthetic beings used by celestials to hatch planets. Thanos and his brother Eros, the god of love, were also Eternals from the planet Titan, but none of these are technically gods the way Zeus and the others are. Above all of these gods are the cosmic beings, depicted in statue form in the chamber of this movie. Eternity, death, eon, infinity, the living tribunal, the watcher, and the one above all. Actually, the one above all here takes a celestial form. And we finally actually see eternity's true cosmic form, but it just seems like eternity in this movie transforms into a new cosmic entity, love, which is another abstract being from Marvel lore. But the fact that those seven were stored together in this chamber suggests that they're on some tier beyond the gods of Omnipotent City, and these seven oversee the multiverse on an equal status, as opposed to any one of them ruling over any one particular dominion or culture. So there you go, that's easily 50 gods identified in the MCU and counting. And I did it all without mentioning, you know, him. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVOSS. Follow New Rockstars, subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching, bye.
We'll be right back.